he thou make the giver of all good and perfect gifts. Oh, I know it was well with your soul as well as it is with man when God saved us from our devil's burning hell. Amen. Amen. It was well with your soul on this morning when God woke you up early this morning and clothed you in your right back. So we, we do reverence God. We thank the Lord. Amen. We said we thank him for his precious Holy Spirit. Be thou comforter. And certainly, amen, he is our God. We do honor each of you on today. Amen. To our very own minister and doctor, Brother Stephen and Sister Stephen. Amen. amen. To Sister Vaughn, your first lady here at the Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church. To all of our people and their families. Amen. Amen. To our Sunday school staff. Amen. Our superintendent, Brother Ryan Thompson. Amen. Brother Willie Hudson. We thank God for them. We certainly thank God for this live streaming team here in our club. Amen. Under the leadership of Brother Ryan Thompson. Along with Sister Hudson, Brother Hudson. Sister Vaughn. Amen. Amen. We do honor our, our very own. We thank God for our musician. Amen. Brother Shaw. Amen. Send to each of you, our father's children. We honor you. We honor our security team on today. We thank God and them. Amen. Uh, to the Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. All of our Facebook viewers. Amen. Conference call listeners. Amen. To all of my relatives and to your relatives in far distant lands. We honor you and we thank God for you. I have relatives that, that have been connected. Amen. From Atlanta, Georgia, St. Louis, Missouri, Florida. Michigan, Wisconsin, and here in the great city of, amen, in the great state of Mississippi. And so we are blessed and highly favored, very fortunate, amen, to have ministry supporters. And I pray God strength upon all of you. Amen, amen. And to bless each of us, amen, as it is his will. Amen. Uh, this is you're called to worship. And certainly you can worship God and where you are. Because God is on our brethren everywhere all at the same time. Yes, yes. Scripture declares that he talked about you and I that worship must worship him. Right? In spirit and in truth. Oh, yeah. So we bid you notice this morning that the Holy Spirit will come in and you can worship him. You can worship God. Come in and let me open up and let me come in wherever you are. And not only is this your call to worship, but it can also be your call to discipleship and to salvation. Amen. God is calling. Amen. We're living in the last and evil days. And I want to encourage all under the sound of my voice as it pertains to salvation, don't put off today. For tomorrow. Amen, amen. For tomorrow is not promised. Amen. Yesterday is gone. Amen. All we have is right now. And tomorrow may never be back. Again, I want to encourage all of us to continue in social distancing. Amen. amen. And, and, and wearing our, amen, CDC guidelines, amen, protection. By way of wearing our gloves and face masks. Amen. And remember, amen, no touching, no skin to skin. Amen. But continue in social distancing. I need to tell somebody that we are by, in no way out of the woods. We're yet in imminent danger. All right. And so we want to, amen, be as safe and secure as we can. Amen. 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 So we do. 
that by being proud and trusting God. Knowing that his word said he didn't bring us this far just to leave us. And with that being said, amen, we, we're going to have, according to our program, congregational hymn. And we said we pray for all of the sound of my Lord and our musician, Brother Shaw. And after that, we will follow our program, our deacon, scripture and prayer. And then we will have our Sabbath school overview done out there at all.
Father God, that your will be done. Yeah. Here on earth as it is in heaven. The Master, give us this day. Just a small portion of our day for you. And forgive us, Father God, of our trespasses. As we forgive those that have trespassed against us. Yeah, yeah. Lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from all the but now it is thy kingdom, all power, and all the power. But here we are once again, Thank Father Lord. God, come out Amen. to your house of worship one more time. Yeah. Oh Lord, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you. Thanking you, Father God, for once again watching over us all you might know. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, we come to thank you for your mighty church that allowed us to rise up to see it. Thank you, Father God, for being able to look out once again and see the sun shine. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, to open up our ears, be able to hear the birds sing one more time. Oh, Father God, we just want to thank you, Father, for keeping a roof over. Oh, yes. Yeah. Dear Master, we want to thank you, Father God, for the rooms we have to go upon our oh, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Father God, I heard our last this morning yeah. that last it was you, Father God, yeah. that put the roof over and our gates. Oh, Oh Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for our eyes have seen you. Thank you, thank you dear Master, for our ears have heard you. Oh God, here we are once again, Father, in the name of the Master. You said in your word, we need you to call. Yeah, I am right now. Call it on you because I realize we need you. We can't make this journey without you holding our hands. Oh Lord, we need you.
thank you, the, the deacons for the devotion yeah, yeah. on this morning. Yeah, yeah. And we again do welcome everyone by way of our Facebook Live, mm -hmm. our worship line, conference call, and other streams of social media that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, so this morning, uh, we will uh, transition into a new month of our Sunday school lesson, and which also pertains to, uh, well, last month we also pertained to how the justices and the injustices of our world, of our nation, of our country, I triggers in into our Christian walk. And so um, today we're going to transition over to what we would like to know and what we like to understand by way of wisdom. Uh, and the subject of our lesson this morning for Sunday, June 7th, the subject is entitled, Listen Up. <laughs> Listen Up. Or, if you're in another uh, literature, your subject could be entitled, The Call of Wisdom. And our passage of scripture this morning is coming from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, All right. verses 7 and 8. Verse 10, verses 20 through 22, and verses 32 and 33. And our main thought among those scriptures reads from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, which says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And our unifying principle says that people feel compelled Come on by something greater than themselves to act wisely when confronting feelings of inadequacy to complete a task. All right. Keep that. So how can they overcome these feelings of inadequacy and move forward? See, a lot of times inadequacies can hold you back. Mm -hmm. And it all holds you back because of what you don't know. All right. And so Very this is the main point that I like in our unifying principle. It says this, that the wisdom of God instructs us to discern the directions we should go and gives us the insight we need to understand life. Mm -hmm. And so that's what wisdom does. And so everyone has always been in debate that who wrote the book of Proverbs? Come on. Because it is a very rich passage, a very rich chapter in our Bible. Mm -hmm. And so the author who wrote or the one who has been declared the one that wrote the book of Proverbs is King Solomon. He did write most of the book of Proverbs when he did that during his reign over Israel during the year 970 through 930 before the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so Solomon wrote Proverbs to offer instruction, Come on. wisdom, and understanding. And he also says in verse number three of chapter one that he also recorded the book to help others gain an understanding of judgment and equity. And to also, in chapter, I'm sorry, in verse four, it says to acquire a simple prudence and to offer discretion and knowledge to our young people. All right. And so what the lesson is telling us this morning is that a lot of times when we have debate over things that are going on, a lot of times we can't talk <laughs> at each other at the same time. All right, all right. Somebody is going to have to be able to listen. All right, so, so, so if I'm talking to the pastor and the pastor is talking to me, how are we able to listen <laughs> to one another? Talk, man. So in other words, sometimes in order, wisdom tells us sometimes that we have to yield our tongue mm. in order to gain an understanding. All right. And so it also tells us this, that the book, of, the book of Proverbs is a collection of wisdom sayings, which is why we epitomize this gem. Yeah. See, the Israelites, through their sacred wisdom literature, demonstrated the principles by which one can answer some of life's perplexing questions. Because yeah. see, in this journey, in this Christian walk, regardless of how young you are, regardless of how old you are, mm -hmm. you have your mind will always have room to gain wisdom. Mm -hmm. right. And so without wisdom, you don't have knowledge. And without knowledge, you have no understanding. You make me find me, man. And so the thing we have to understand is this, that if, if I am approached by a total stranger that wants to share some knowledge, I first want to make sure that, first of all, that he's in the Word of God. Right. Mm. 
See, see, that's where, and then it says, the fear of the Lord yeah. is the foundation of knowledge. So, unless you know the word of God, that's the only way that you can understand that we should all fear God. Mm -hmm. And so, it tells us this this morning that wisdom comes in very, very different patterns. So, if, you, if you're at home, if you have a pen or, or you want to share, write this down, I, I encourage you to do so. Yeah. Because... Proverbs emphasizes the responsibility of parents to instruct their children in God's word and to train them to fulfill. That's why the Bible tells us that train up a child in the way it should go. And when he is old, whether he's 50, 60, 40, or 45, even 70, mm -hmm. if he's your child, he will not depart from it. And so that's why you, you, the, the, the training of God's word in your children to start at a very early age. Mm -hmm. Proverbs, it says this, that Proverbs also presents us with the choice to follow the path of life, or we can choose to follow the road to destruction. Mm -hmm. And so the thing we have to understand is this in our life, that a lot of times when we're on our jobs, our bosses, our supervisors, our managers can share with us knowledge. All right. But if we don't apply it in the right way, we cannot be successful okay. with what we do on our job. Right. The same thing goes in our Christian walk. We've always been encouraged and are always given wisdom and knowledge to do the right choice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but at the same time, in order to succeed, in order to prosper, on. we have to use that knowledge and apply it. Mm -hmm. See, <laughs> when I was young, my hair couldn't grow. Unless I apply something to it. All right. That's what, that's what it does. And so your mind grows. Come on. Your heart grows. Uh -huh. Everything grows when you apply knowledge yeah. into it. Mm -hmm. All right. And so the lesson also tells us this about wisdom. Again, it says that the fear of the Lord mm -hmm. is the beginning of knowledge. Right. So first of all, in order, in order to share knowledge with somebody, you must fear God. Mm -hmm. And so, in other words, in order to know that you that, that God is, that you fear God and that God is the head of your life, and first of all, you must reverence Him. You must reverence Him, and when you reverence God, that gives you knowledge that you know that God is in control. God is the head of your life. He is the Creator and the Maker of every good and perfect gift that comes from above. All right. And so, it also tells us this that about knowledge that there is a difference between wisdom and knowledge. So there's a thin line, but at the same time, there is a difference. And this is where you separate apples and oranges. And so it says this, that knowledge is information that may be gained in a multiple ways. Wisdom is knowledge that is rightly applied. All right. Wow. See, you can know what you know, but if you're not applying it, you're not gaining wisdom. And so it tells us this also, that in order to know the Lord, we must have knowledge of him. So again, that's why I say, if, if, if anyone wants to share knowledge with you, we, we want to be under the understanding or, or under the, not, not really the assumption, but we want to make sure that whoever shares knowledge with yeah, you yeah. Is, in, in, is also in the Word of God. Yeah. They know the Word of God. Mm -hmm. They can share with you wisdom because they know what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. All right, and so it says this also that wisdom is a gift from God. All right. See, see, everybody can't share wisdom with you. Mm. That's because a lot of folks don't know mm. the word of God. That's real, yeah. And so, in order to know what wisdom is, God has to anoint your heart. Mm. God has to anoint your mind. See, the only thing is, when, when, when wisdom is a gift, you'll be able to share with those that need it mm -hmm. and those that don't need it. Mm. And so that's what it tells us is that <clears throat> through Christ, by way of uh, his supplication, by way of understanding that how he went to that cross and how he died All right, now. and how he laid in Joseph's bar tomb. Thank you, man. And in three days later, hmm. we know and we understand that he rose with all the power in his hand. That's what we gain wisdom. That's what we gain knowledge and understanding. Right. And that all triggered down to the word of God. Hmm. So in my closing, Proverbs 1 and 7 is one of the most powerful verses in the book of Proverbs. Right. The fear of the Lord is the foundation and it unlocks the door 
See, your wisdom is the key that unlocks the door in this life. Mm -hmm. And so the fear of the Lord helps us recognize who God is. And the one thing that it does, that once we know who God is, we must submit ourselves and be able to obey his word. Yeah, yeah. And so, again, in order to gain wisdom, sometimes you just don't have to be quiet. Huh. Come on. Sometimes you just can't be able to, you know, sometimes there, there's some folk out there that, that not only do they think they know more than you, they think they know more than God. So a lot of times we just have to yield our tongue. Be quiet for a little while. Yield ourselves, yield our tongue, and listen. Because a lot of times when people give us wisdom, the wisdom is what does say our Lord. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage everybody by way of what the lesson tells us this morning. Is that Solomon wanted to share wisdom with the Israelites. Mm -hmm. And so right now, we, we're living in a time where right now with this pandemic, Come on. with the chaos, with uh, lives being innocently taken, we need to be able to listen. These protests, these things that are going on, not only in our nation, it's going on in our world. Right. It has extended outside of, of the boundaries of this nation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when people are coming before us, instead of trying to say that they're wrong about what they're saying and making them feel like they're wrong about what they're saying, sometimes we just need to listen. Yeah. Right. So listen up. So. Listen up to our elders. Yeah. Listen up to sometimes even, even a child can tell you, I'll share, I'll share with you a little wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so that's what our listener is telling us this morning is that we want to make sure that we listen up and do what does say of the Lord by way of sharing our wisdom where we can gain a better knowledge and even a better understanding. Amen. And God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.
really want to do it and do it right, the songwriters can give him the highs of praise. Amen. And when praise is go up, you know what happens. Amen. Blessings Amen. continue to come down. Amen. 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 Sister Hudson is going to come down with our announcements. Amen. And our welcome. Amen. Amen. We give God all the praise. And we thank you for our Facebook listeners. Uh, we thank our conference call uh, uh, listeners also. Our worship experience, our live, ex live service. Mm -hmm. We welcome each of you to our services. We hope that once our doors reopen, that you will come to visit us. We're thanking you for the many, many calls, the many people who have who have wanted to know how they can help us. So we're thanking you in advance. We want you to know that today is our communion. And for those of you who have not received your communion yet, you, yep, you still have time to get here and get your communion. Uh, we also want you to remember that if you cannot send uh, your tithes by somebody, or you want to give us an offering, you can mail that to P.O. Box 2 in Belden, Mississippi, 38826. Today, we also want to remember those who have survived cancer. Here at our church, we have Mother Othella Bunn, Mother Mildred Smith, Mother Jewel McGee, Mother Willie Selway, mm -hmm. Sister uh, Susie, Susie Bond, right. Sister Shalette Judon, Brother Kenneth McGee, Sister Gloria Harris, and Sister Kathy Thompson. We dare not overlook anyone. If your name is omitted, we do apologize. We celebrate our cancer survivors. So this, we want you to know that we are so grateful that you have survived. Just like we are grateful for those who are surviving this pandemic, we want you to know that we are grateful for each of you. Today, we also want to remind you that on Wednesday, we will also be uh, still have our conference call Bible study, where myself will be again teaching. Uh, we will send out what the subject will be throughout the week, so we will be able to look over everything. Uh, we also want to rem remember our sick and shed in, all the members of, of our church who are sick, who have been in the hospital, who have, who just are in need of prayer. So therefore, we are, we're claiming everybody for our, on our prayer, prayer list. Our benevolent, any families who are mourning at this time, mourning a loved one, we are, un we are aware that there are many during this time who have passed on. And we are, we are remembering you, and we are constantly praying for you. Our June birthday, as I know, we've already celebrated mine on the first. <laughs> and we celebrated several others during this month. But we know that this week coming up will be Brother Kamari Thompson will be the 14th. He's our drummer. Brother Levante Miller will be the 12th. And he is an Ursha, he is a choir member, he is a member of Mount Pleasant. Amen. Again, anybody that I am missing, we do apologize. We will get our list going again. We will get those, I will get those from our announcer who will get her job back just as soon. <laughs> just as soon as she can get in here because she does such a marvelous job. So we want to uh I uh, want you to know that we do apologize that we are not being able to mention you, but I will get all the lists back and we will start those again. Uh, we, again, as we said, we will have our communion today. So those of you who are on your way, uh, if you want to put, pick up a program so from where we are now, as Pastor said, we, will, uh, we have programs that we will have for you each Sunday if you want to get a program because we want you to follow us with our service. We uh, still don't know, Pastor, how long this will be going on. So as long as it's going on, we will continue to do our service the way that Pastor has provided us to do it. Uh, we thank you in advance. And as always, Sister Vaughn, uh, Mount Pleasant is...
pleasant place to be. According to your will. Oh, yeah. 
And even now, God, as we ask that you would continue to bless us, even now, we say in our praying and our asking, not our will, but your will be done. Oh, God, we thank you right now that you are doctor. Amen, amen. In sick rooms all over the land and country. Then you've never lost a patient. Tell you that we're thinking that not only are you a doctor, but you're a way maker. You're still able and always will be able to make a way out of nowhere. You brought us from the early existence of our days up until the present moment. And God, we want to tell you that we're thanking the Lord. We never could have made it this far without you. Never could have done it by ourselves. We want to tell you that we're brought us all the way. You've you been our sustainer, our keeper. You've been bread on our table. You've been away out of nowhere. Thank you for being uh, our peace and our righteousness. Our sanctification. Thank you for being our justification. We, there's no way we can justify our own self. And then we thank you for being our salvation. There's no way we can save our own self. So we thank you for your saving grace. Pray now that you would bless all those who have saved. Amen, amen. Come on, Pastor, come on. And who are yet saved when you pray. Mm -hmm. Pray for me. Yes, pray. yes. Only you know all our needs. Yes. Well, God, we ask now that you would continue to bless this nation. And then not only this nation, but every nation, every tongue, oh, yeah. every leader. Oh. Father God, and certainly we're praying for the church, yeah. the universal body of Christ. Oh, yeah. And that you would keep all of us as you always have. And as only you can. Again, we thank you for blessing the sick and afflicted all over the land and country. Thank you for strength of heart, mind, body, spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I give you all the praise and all the glory. Yes, yes. For it is in your mighty and marvelous and magnificent name yes, Lord. that we do pray. We give you thanks and praise. Yes, amen. 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 And amen. God bless you. Amen. For the God. Will come with another selection. After which, while, amen, he's making ready, he's already ready. You can go with me to the book of Hebrews. And the chapter is chapter 11. Again, that's verse number 1. We will be talking from the second. Thank you for today's troubles. Faith. In God yeah. for today's troubles. You do know, amen, that it is only the Word of God that is able, can, and will sustain us and keep us and see us through. Amen. 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 The troubles of life. So if you're looking for the answers anywhere else other than the Word of God, by the Spirit of the Lord, you might be looking in the wrong place. All right, all right. Amen, Brother Sean.
get bought by it is. And then he's holding on to us. And because he's holding us in the palm of his hand, we are yet able that we are. to hold on to his hand. Amen. And we, we're holding on to him with this cold. It's really here in chapter 11. I thank God again for confirmation. Because of any, any of us, any of you all, if you're still holding on, huh. you, ain't, you ain't doing it the one way. All right. If you're holding on to his hand. Uh -huh. You're holding on to his hand by faith. Yes. That's the only way. According to the text. That's the only way to please God. Amen. That's the only way to hold on with him. Here it is. Here's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us on today. In these troubled times. Verse 1, chapter 11. The book of Hebrews. He says, Now faith. Verse 1. Is the substance of things hoped for. Right. The evidence of things not seen. For by it, talk about things, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It is by faith, amen, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his guilt. And by it, he being dead, yet speaking. By faith, huh. it all was translated that he should not see death. Amen. It was not found because God had translated him. Before his translation, he had this testimony. It all did. That he Please, God. Right. And so, verse 6 says it all. And without, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Amen, amen. Please God, for he that cometh unto God must believe that He is right. and that He is yeah. Yeah. a reward of of them that diligently seek him. Amen, Lord, amen. God bless you and you may be seated from these things where he in these troubles sometimes we're seeing trouble, sicknesses, disasters, catastrophes. Amen. We're facing things that seem uncertain that we don't even sometimes understand. Can't seem to be able to figure it out. And so, the good part about life and life in Christ is that if we walk by faith and not by sight, amen, we'll be able to amen, endure life and amen, endure the troubles of life. And we will continue to walk by faith. Mm -hmm. Then in the love of God, faith for today it is the same as faith for yesterday, right. even though it's gone. Mm -hmm. Today and tomorrow, which we have not received yet, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Hebrew writer makes it clear, crystal clear. On over in chapter, in the 8th chapter, verse 13, that if our faith is in the, the right one, right. that is 
of Jesus the Christ. If our faith is in him, then we do know, we believe, according to his word, that he is the same yesterday. Amen. Today and forevermore. The reason why we entitled this message today, Faith for the Day of Trouble, is because we want to exercise faith. Exercise it as we deal with issues that are at hand. Sometimes we face issues at hand and we, and amen, we find ourselves trying to deal with them, amen, without using the faith of God.
So faith, amen, for today applies to the right now, according to the text, right now kind of faith. Amen. That is needed today. At this present time. Amen. I, I know we got things to do tomorrow. Things are happening, but we, we need to kind of stay in touch. With a songwriter mm -hmm. who, who sung the song one day at a time. Right. Yeah. Amen. Sweet Jesus. I need you right now. Mm -hmm. The song this was said on this wise as it applies to the faith in God right now. Psalm 46 and 1. He said, the song says, God mm -hmm. is our refuge. He is our strength. Yes. Here he is, here he is right here. A very present help. Come on, right now. Uh -huh. A very present help in the time of trouble. Amen, amen, amen. That right now kind of help. Amen. Amen, that right now kind of faith. And that's the kind of faith we must have. Amen, for the daily struggles of today's time. Amen, we need, we need some right now faith. Huh. The same kind of faith that the elders used in this text. All over the, in the context of this message. Amen. For, for, the right, for the right now and then type of situations. In other words, you ought to be facing some stuff right now. And you need to use the same kind of faith. We need to use the same kind of faith, amen, that Abraham and, and, and Abel and all of them used in the text. Uh -huh. We need to use that. Now kind of faith. Of the book of Hebrews. Arthur. He's unknown. And it is strongly suggested that. Amen. If this book is studied carefully. Even though you don't know the author. But if you study it carefully. And meditate on it properly. Amen. You can get to know the author. Really well. All right. Here it is between the chapters of. 10 and 12, there in the middle of is chapter 11. All three of these chapters, they deal with important issues. Uh -huh. Issues such as Christian perseverance. Mm -hmm. In spite of all of life difficulties, all right, all right. it deals with faith in God. Mm -hmm. It also deals with a godly kind of fear which our Sunday school lesson talked about this morning. And it deals with having a fellowship or a relationship with God. Yeah. So here we are now in the of our text. Well, the Hebrew writer defines faith. Uh -huh. Amen. Verse number one, he said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that means that this kind of faith, it is a confident attitude toward God. Yes. And I need to say that again. This kind of faith uh -huh. is a confident attitude toward God and not yourself. All right. All right. All right. Having a confident attitude toward God as we commit our lives to His will. All right. In other words, Amen. To have faith in God, we realize it's not my will, well, well. but the Lord's will be done. Mm -hmm. It ain't about me. It ain't about you, but it's all about Him. Yeah, yeah. It is believing that according to His word, this is now faith. According to His word in the Bible, Amen. That the Lord will, He will perform. Everything that he said he would for our day in. Right. He said it, he's faithful. Yeah. He will perform it. Sometimes we got to get out of his way. Right. Let God be God. Let him do what he does. Uh -huh. Have faith in him and be patient and wait on him. Amen. Because faith is needed. For all of our 
our needs. We have many different needs. Lots of stuff goes on in our lives. We need faith for all of us. But there are different types of faith. First of all, there's faith that involves salvation. Amen. Romans 10 and 9 read that if thou shalt come. This is faith. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Yes. Lean in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. He didn't say you might. He said thou shalt be saved. Amen. 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 It's the kind of faith that where the unsaved must come to believe and depend on the finished work of Christ. Depend yes, yes, yeah. on him for what he's done, his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Yes, sir, it's all about him. And not about us. Right, and then depend on him yeah. as the only way for forgiveness of our sins. And the only way have eternal life. Right. Mm-hmm. In other words, faith is the instrument, amen, by which the gift of salvation is received. Mm-hmm. If you want to be saved, you're going to have to have faith and receive, amen, the Lord Jesus Christ, right. as he has said, yeah. his death, burial, and his resurrection, yeah. we're going to have to receive him if we want to be saved. So there is another type of faith in the New Testament refers to the teachings of the Bible. Yeah. You just got to believe what the Bible says. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. Even as it was in the Old Testament. Amen. How better how talk that the just, okay, who you is, right? Mm-hmm. The just shall live by if you say. Make sure remember what denomination you are. All right. Amen. What color you are. Right. If you are a child of God and you believe in the faith of God, you got to live by it. How bad are two and four? Faith is the eyes and the other soul. Yeah. Amen. The Bible, or should I say, faith is the eyes of the soul. The Bible is the eyeglasses. Through which faith looks. Right. And enables the soul to see yeah. invisible mm-hmm. and eternal things, which is called spiritual faith. Mm-hmm. You can't see, you may see these type of like spiritual things with the physical eye. Mm-hmm. But you gotta look at them, amen, with the spiritual eye. Mm-hmm. Spiritual faith enables the soul. I love this. To embrace all the great truths of God. See, something you just can't understand. But by faith, you got to trust God, believe it, amen, and trust God in. Yeah. Uh-huh. Amen. Faith allows us not only to see, but to take hold of those things that we hope for. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The things that we long for. And that we wish for. It allows us to, amen, obtain the things that we need. Amen. There are many who are going through all types of suffering. Amen. All types of sickness, mental issues, financial struggles, spiritual weaknesses, mental and emotional problems, family problems, trouble on the job. Troubles in the home and even in the church community. I have discovered that the best way to deal with so much chaos is to trust in the Lord. To handle all of our troubles. And that means we got to have faith and keep the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That some way, somehow, He can and He will. Work it all out. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Faith for the troubles of today calls for right now faith. Yes. Right there, verse 1 and 8 calls. Faith in the Lord, Lord. We must have faith in the Lord on how to deal okay. with sicknesses, disease of all sorts, cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease. 
emotional, psychological, and spiritual problems, and many more of which it takes faith in the Lord to deal with these things. Right. Let me be the first to tell you, amen, that a little faith, a little faith, and a little common sense goes a long way. From my own experience, faith and some common sense will guide you to the right person to get, amen, proper help for your condition. Here it is, here's what I'm talking about. If I was sick, look like it wasn't going to get no better, I wouldn't continue to try to treat my own health. I would continue to try to heal myself. Come on, Pastor. But my faith in God yeah. and just a little bit of common and good sense mm -hmm. would tell me I need to go to a doctor. Huh. Yeah. Come on, doctor. Come on, doctor. Someone who is better qualified yeah. to handle my situation. Yes, mm -hmm. Then other troubles. And then the word I'm going to tell you out of my hand, amen, I'm going to talk about things such as COVID-19, right. coronavirus, we live in trouble times, terrible times. Amen, yes, the loss of millions of lives. I mean, we're, we're in some trouble sometimes. Catastrophes and sicknesses of all sorts. Yeah. We live in a collapsing economy. Where there's much unemployment, where there is a great loss of jobs, yeah. businesses, and global economic shutdown. Yeah. Then there is the, the chaos of police brutality. Oh, God. Oh, God. And then there were there was a killing of George Floyd. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That ignited global protests. Yeah. 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 That yes, black lives, mm -hmm. they do matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all lives in the eyes of God That's right, matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that these acts of evil, this merciless killing, mm -hmm. senseless killing, unlawful killing, that these acts must be dealt with. Yeah. Then there are those who use the platform of lawful protest. Called opportunities. All right. As an opportunity to lose, to steal, kill, and destroy. Come on, which that's wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And which that should not be. Amen. Not to make it out of all of this. See a lot going on. Mm -hmm. There are still earthquakes yeah. that are prevalent in many places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Tropical storm. Yeah. Crystal ball. It's brewing in the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, yeah. All of this is much, much more that is happening right now, right now. even as we speak. Oh, yeah. And if we focus on it too much, it will become mind blowing, oh, yeah. mind boggling, yeah. and even faith shaking. Uh -huh. So it is. Amen. That we need the faith of God to keep going. Amen. At least some of us, somebody gets weird mm -hmm. and fall by the wayside. Right? Mm -hmm. So do this for me, if you will. As we think of all the trouble that is going on today, especially the coronavirus, out of all that has happened, don't you do so? And out of all what could happen, all that is happening right now today, Amen. I want you to look directly 
carry us home.
must first believe you gotta have faith. Yeah, yeah. That God, that He is, and that He is a rewarder. And in another way, or a blesser, yeah, right. He blesses them that diligently seek Him. Yeah, right. And after coming to Him in belief, then you got to try Him. Right, yes, Come on, God. Yeah. You got to try Him. And then in time where you must activate your faith. You gotta try him in times of trouble and watch God move on our behalf. Come now. Here it is by faith. And then Abraham believed God. Obeyed God when God told him to leave his family, leave his homeland, and go to a place. Amen. That Abraham knew nothing about. A land that God will give him for an inheritance. You know what Abraham did. By faith, he obeyed God. By faith, he became father of many nations. Sarah, I tell you, she tried God by faith. When God promised her and Abraham a child, promised him a child, and then he gave her the strength. And then to conceive a child, and not only to conceive, but he gave her the strength to also to deliver a child in her own way. So my brothers and my sisters, you can believe the Bible. When it teaches that activated faith in God is most powerful. And all I'm saying in my culture, it is so powerful. I feel it happening right now. Come on, Pastor. Right. Activated faith is so powerful. Yeah, yeah. Jesus said in Matthew 21 and 21, uh -huh. activated faith can move mountains. Uh -huh. Jesus said that you have the faith and doubt not. Yeah. You, 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 you can speak to mountains. I tell them to be thou removed. Yes, sir. Amen. And the mountains will be removed into the sea. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Come on, preacher. Activated faith, I tell you, in God. Uh -huh. It calls Peter. Yes, sir. Amen. To step out on that. Yeah. Called water. Amen. To walk on water. Yeah. And to walk on it by faith. Yes, sir. Or I stop by to tell somebody that. God, when you activate it, uh -huh. it is very powerful. Yes, sir. Activated faith, it calls the blind man, well, amen, to receive yeah. his sight. Yeah. It calls the woman with initial blood, uh -huh. ah, who believed in God, yeah. to what yes, he said, I can just touch yeah. uh, the heel of your gun. All right.
Come on, everybody else turn their backs on you. They weak. Both gonna turn their backs on you. They can't help you because that's the measure of men. That's the measure of people. We can only go so far, but God can go all the way. Amen, amen, Pastor. And He will go all the way. Yes, yes. So the Lord of the church is over. Yes. And you can come to Jesus, but I need to tell you, you can come by faith. Yes. Come believing that He is, that He is, like the water, those who diligently seek Him. Believe that He is Lord and Savior of the world. Again, Romans 10 and 9 says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth. The Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt, thou shalt. be saved. Amen, Amen, Pastor. Amen. So we hope that we've said something to get you a long way. But I need to tell somebody that we don't have anything there that is good to offer you. Everything that we can offer that is good for us is found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Even though we're in uncertain times. Same yesterday. Right now, today, and the devil both. He ain't gonna change for you. He ain't gonna change for me. His way already set. We just want to get in line with God. Brother Shaw is gonna come with another selection. Again, this is your call to the site of truth. And after Brother Shaw comes, ready to honor God. We get ready to reverence him. Amen. In our community. His death, burial, and his resurrection. He said as often as we do this, do it in remembrance. Amen. Amen. Don't shame.
this is just the day that it was set aside. Amen. To remember, to observe, to commemorate, to appreciate what the Lord has done for us and what He is doing for us right now. He died. He was buried in Joseph's barter. God raised him on the third day morning. That's what he done for. Him. And right now, what he's doing was he's sitting on the right hand of his father. Amen. He's interceding for us. He's blessing us with all the blessings that we stand in need of. We need to remember that. We need to honor that. We need to keep that. Do eat in remembrance <laughs> of me. And they ate. Mm -hmm. 
This wine is my blood in the New Testament. And as often as you do drink, do drink in remembrance of me and they drink. And it's believed that they sang a hymn. After which and they all passed out into the Mount of Olives. God bless you for tuning in with us, watching with us. May God bless you.